How about it, folks? Andy Stringfield. I'm dreaming tonight of a place I love even more than I used. It's a long road back I promise you I'll be home for Christmas You can Andy Stringfield and they go. Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams. I'll be home for Christmas if all. When 
Christ was born. Oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night divine. Truly, he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains of Shelley break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we, let all within us praise his holy Okay, make them welcome Macy and Micah Miller. Leo Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Reindeer. Had a very shiny nose like a light bulb. And if you ever saw it, saw it. you would even say it glows. Like a light bulb. All of, All of the other reindeers. Reindeer. Used to laugh and call him names. Like Pinocchio. They never let poor Rudolph, Rudolph. join any reindeer games. Like Monopoly. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Ho, ho, ho. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, loved him, as he showered up with glee. Yippee! Rudolph, the red nosed reindeer, reindeer, you go down his story. Like George Washington. Good job, folks. Macy and Micah Miller. Yeah, when I was about uh, Macy's age or a little younger uh, back in West Virginia, on Christmas Eve, uh, we were at Grandma Boots's and we heard about a family we went to church with that was having trouble financially. We can all relate, can't we? Uh, that year, there were two little boys and those boys were around my age and I was in the first grade. They were in my Sunday school class and they weren't going to get much uh, for Christmas that year. We had just opened Christmas presents at Grandma Boots's. We had tons of stuff. And uh, we, had, uh, we were playing in the kids' room, having a ball. And uh, Dad got a phone call from someone at church, and they said a family that just lived down the road from Grandma was having a hard time. Their dad had been laid off from work at the glass factory. Their mom had been in the hospital. We weren't aware of it. It was fairly late on Christmas Eve, and they, weren't, they didn't have gifts. So Grandma got a whole bunch of money what I thought was a whole bunch, and gave it to my dad, my Uncle Dickie. They ran out and found a gas station that was open all night, bought up all the toys and brought them back. And as they were gone, we ran around and got bows and ribbons out of the trash that we had already opened, boxes and scotch tape, the wrapping paper out of the closet, and um, uh, my Aunt Susie and my mom, my Aunt Becky, and my cousins, we all got everything ready. Dad and my uncle came back and had all kinds of toys, and uh, we uh, found um, the house that the folks had lived in. And uh, Dad taught me uh, that night, my daddy taught me that uh, we weren't going to let them know where the presents came from. So we decided that we would start a tradition. 
And it was so fun because we weren't planning on doing it. We weren't planning a tradition. It just happened. We wrapped up the presents, put them in garbage bags, and we ran up on the porch and knocked on the door and ran away. I don't remember what I got for Christmas that year. Actually, I don't remember what I got for Christmas most of the years, really. But I remember the different years that we call it the drop. Now, my cousins, we all have kids of our own. And guess what we're going to do on Christmas Eve this year? We found a family. We'll get together and wrap presents, and we'll go do the drop, and we run. Sometimes we fall on the ice or the dogs chase us. Sometimes we get shot at. But no one's been killed yet, have we, baby? But this is a song that I wrote uh, that talks about that night. And my desire in writing this song is that you will be encouraged to find your own Christmas Eve down Sun Valley Road. First house on the left, down Sun Valley Road. We gathered at my grandma's house many years ago. Telling stories, playing games, giving gifts at night. As daddy laid the phone down, you could tell some things weren't right. So gathered around the table, he told what he had learned. A family down the valley whose Christmas took a turn. Two boys and their parents had run across hard times. Their daddy just got laid off and they were down to their last dime. Silence fell upon the room with tears and some eyes. It was late on Christmas Eve, we didn't have much time. Then Grandma reached into her purse and handed her two boys a bunch of cash, hoping they could go and find some toys. When they returned with loaded arms from their shopping trip, we gathered to find ribbons, bows, boxes that would fit. We headed down the valley where the family stayed. We put the presents on the porch, knocked and ran away. Christmas Eve down Sun Valley Road. A little boy learned the greatest story ever told. Heaven gave the gift that we could have eternal life. But now it's up to us to make sure things down here go right. I learned the greatest story ever told greatest story on Christmas Eve down Sun Valley Road. Of all the gifts that I've received, all the carols I've sung, nothing stands out in my mind like the lesson that I learned. The greatest gift that I receive is the chance I have to give and share the message of the gospel every day I live. Christmas Eve down Sun Valley Road. A little boy learned the greatest story ever told. Heaven gave the gift that we could have eternal life. But now it's up to us to make sure things down here go right. Learn the greatest story ever told. On Christmas Eve down Sun Valley Road. On Christmas Eve down Sun Valley Road. I learned the greatest story ever told. Good. I, I, I love the Christmas story. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I took him as my Savior and Lord back in 1974, and it's just been a wonderful journey. There's nothing better than serving the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and I love him and I love his word. So this is the word tonight. This is Luke and this is chapter 2, actually starting in verse 1. In those days it occurred that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole Roman Empire would be registered. And all the people were going to be registered, each to his own city or town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the town of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his wife, because she was about to come become a mother. And while they were there, the time came for her delivery, and she gave birth to her son, her firstborn, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room or place for them in the inn. And in that vicinity there were shepherds living out under the open sky in the field, watching in shifts over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone all about them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For unto you this day is born a Savior in the city and the town of David, who is Christ, the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you by which you will recognize him. You will find, after searching, a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. Then suddenly there appeared with the angel an army of the troops of heaven, a heavenly knighthood, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased. Isn't that wonderful? I'm telling you, there's nothing like the Christmas story. There's nothing like the word of God and everybody. The greatest news that could ever be is that we have a Savior that forgives us of all our sin, and we can be saved the moment we accept him and take him as our own, JP. And anybody can do it, no matter where they are, no matter where they've been, no matter who they are, no matter what age they are. There are no requirements except that you sell out to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and Amen? Amen. And that's a good word. That, that, <laughs> is, that is the purpose. You know, Jim has, um, is his mic on over there? Um, yes. Jim has devoted so much of his life to, to spreading the gospel through media, you know? Yes. And we call it the good news, you know? Amen. And that was one of the shows that you all hosted, I think, <laughs> you know, did. throughout uh, your career. And uh, I'm, I met Jim and Ellen at the beginning of my career. Um, just so you know, I just realized I didn't change clothes and I have a big hole in my <laughs> jeans. And I was like, I just felt my skin. That feels odd on a TV show. And I, I've been so busy, I didn't get to move my car and I didn't get to change clothes. But um, I met Jim and Ellen years ago. I had would just moved here to, to start singing gospel music. Uh, I thought, hey, I'd love to have my own television show. So Jim was running gospel music television. And I said, hey, could I have a show on gospel music television? He said, well, what experience do you have? And I said, none. He said, okay, we'll do it. So that was the easiest gig I ever got, I think. <laughs> and uh, we've done a lot together since then. Yeah, and, well, we uh, sure have, JP. And I wanted to say, because you mentioned about soul winning and, and, and I was involved. With, well, your brother right behind you there, Dale Burgess, is putting my life story together yes. on video right now. And in going through my life and talking about the different places I've been and preached over the years, uh, and I, I, the cords won't let me <laughs> have any more. <laughs> He's Pentecostal. He needs a cordless. <laughs> right. Anyway, reminiscing all of the yeah. 
people that I've led to the Lord different ways around the world over the years even astonish me to have been a part. And I don't say that for me. You no, know I know. I say it because the Lord's allowed me to do it Absolutely. and be a part of winning so many souls in so many different countries. I am so grateful at this time of year to know yeah. that I can say to my Lord Jesus, happy birthday and thank yeah. you for letting me be a part of your the story she just Amen. read. Yeah, yeah. that's good. That's good. And, and speaking of that, um, uh, a while ago, I was uh, speaking with the owners of our store, Ron and Betty Ogle, uh, and, and, and they're big, uh, they just think the world of both of you all, and oh, well, Ron, was, Ron was uh, asking about all the different things that you had done, and, oh. and so I told him, and um, he actually went... <laughs> Did he have a day huh? to listen? <laughs> yeah, I told him a long thing, and he actually went um, uh, to, to great measure to, uh, for this to happen, but... Um, Ron, tell us, come over here so you can get right on camera right in front of Ellen, but tell us what's going on here. JP, uh, as, as you well know, I uh, sat on city council for many years, Ellen and Jim, and uh, we do still have a lot of influence inside the city and the county. And we know you're all residents of Pigeon Forge, but we got the mayor and the city council of Sevierville today to proclaim Jim and Helen Moss Day. What? And, uh, and we we want to read it in detail but uh, but we wanted to honor you because uh, of all your commitment and we know that this is just an earthly thing but your reward is to yet to come and this is very I'm special shocked. this is very special they don't give too many of these things away and uh, we I want Marcy to read it because I can't see that well but I want her to read it I want to I want folks listen to some of the history of Jim and Ellen what all they've been in it's just amazing and I'm going to let Marcy read it just due to the time of the proclamation. This is from the City of Sevierville, Office of the Mayor. This proclamation says, On behalf of the people of the City of Sevierville, by his honor, the Mayor, Brian C. Atchley, to publicly recognize December 21st, 2015, as Jim and Ellen Moss Day in Sevierville, Tennessee. Whereas, that's awesome. Whereas Dr. Moss has helped to pioneer I'm sorry, I skipped a line. Dr. Jim Moss is considered to be one of the founding fathers of daily Christian television. He was also a co-founder and executive vice president of the PTL Television Network out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And whereas Dr. Moss has helped to pioneer several Christian television stations and networks in over 40 years of ministry and has worked very closely with many television pastors, including Pastor John Hagee, he was involved with producing television specials and crusades with Billy Graham and his association, and whereas Ellen Moss is a teacher and encourager of God's word on television and radio, she is also an active speaker in churches and at conferences. She loves sharing God wor God's word, calling it the treasures of my heart, taken from Matthew 6, 21. Ellen is a former flight attendant for Delta Airlines with over 37 years of service, traveling all over the world, and whereas locally, Dr. Jim and Ellen Moss currently host a radio program called This is Today with Jim and Ellen Moss on Praise 96.3 FM, WJBZ. Together, Jim and Ellen have been co-hosts and guests on TC C TCT, Total Christian Television, GMT, Gospel Music Television, Daystar Television Network, Direct TV, Comcast, A Talk of the Town, Living Faith TV, and the Smoky Mountain Gospel Jubilee. They were also the celebrity spokespersons for Be Alive Royal Jelly. And whereas Dr. Jim and Ellen Moss have also ministered in London, England, and Johannesburg, South Africa, they were co-pastors of the Grand Chapel in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and enjoyed ministering to the local community and tourists that came to visit the Great Smoky Mountains. And now therefore, I, Brian C. Ashley, Major Mayor of Sevierville, do hereby proclaim December 21st, 2015, as Jim and Ellen Ross, uh, Jim and Ellen Moss Day <laughs> in Sevierville, Tennessee, and I encourage all citizens to warmly join together in celebration on this day. How about it, folks, for Jim and Ellen Moss? Isn't that great? It's totally the Lord. It's totally I, I, I know it's the Lord, and I know that's.
Furniture Outlet offers factory direct prices for furniture, mattresses, accessories, and more for Sevierville, Pigeon Forge, and the surrounding areas. The 63,000 square foot showroom features one of the largest collections of bedroom sets, dining tables, sofas, and recliners around. Come see us at the Big Red Building on the Hill at 1063 Dolly Parton Parkway in Sevierville. Since 1938, Smith Madison Ogle Properties has been serving Sevierville, Pigeon Forge, and Gatlinburg with affordable residential and commercial rentals. We require no credit check or application fees. We believe in second chances. View our properties online or call 865-428-5161. This is Chase Irwin, General Manager at White Pine Golf Club, inviting you to join us for a fun and casual golf experience. Whether you play nine holes with a cart for $17 on weekdays or play all day any day for just $30, White Pine Golf Club is great for all ages and skill levels. Kids 12 and under play free, and senior rates are available Tuesday and Thursday. Come check out our fully stocked pro shop and newly renovated lounge areas. Don't forget, we are also your one-stop shop for club repair, alterations, and re-gripping. Call 865-674-9986 or visit our website at whitepinegolfclub.com and